RC time constant. Before we get into the dimensions of this value RC that pops up in this equation, let's just recap what this equation describes. This is the decay rate of voltage across a capacitor that's allowed to reorient itself after having been, quote, charged up. So look back at the previous video where we went over these equations for a little recap of that. But the equation that we are looking at is we start out at some value V naught, whatever the capacitor happens to be, whatever voltage it's held at, and once the capacitor is allowed to short itself out, and there's a little resistance that happens to be in this loop, we have C, we have R, how long is it going to take for the voltage to equalize across the plates of the capacitor, essentially for all the charge to readjust so that there is no net charge separated on either plate of the capacitor. And if we remember, V at T equals zero is the same as saying V naught times E to the zero, and anything times E to the zero is just itself, because E to the zero is one. It's this special number E that's very useful across so many areas of science, physics, biology. It's a, it's a number that describes so much of the natural world. I think it's a lot cooler than pi. Um, the value of E, if you were to plug it into a calculator or look it up in a table, is approximately 2.78182818246, and that's all I remember of the digits. Um, it's almost three, just slightly less. On the flip side, pi is almost three, it's just slightly more. And E and pi are, are connected in so many ways. Um, pi we associate with things like circles and periodic functions. E we associate with things that grow and decay somewhat asymptotically or out of control. Um, in this case, we're looking at an asymptotic decay. We start out at some value V naught, and we decay down to, asymptotically, to a value of zero as time proceeds, as time gets very big. Because what we would have then, again, at V as T goes to infinity, is V naught times, I'll incorporate that negative sign that's in the equation, E to the infinity over RC, or again, very big number, which really amounts to V naught over infinity, which is functionally zero. Not functionally in the mathematical sense, but for all practical purposes, whatever you might measure with a multimeter. Um, the, the, the scope of E here, I want to, before we look at the dimensions of R and C, um, let's look at Y E. And there's, a, there's this two-thirds, kind of one-third approximation that's given in Make Electronics in the, the chapter about capacitors. Um, but let's see where that actually comes from. What is this E functionally used for? Um, if I were to raise E to the first power, that's just that value 2.7818, etc. Um, e to the negative one, however, remember, is 1 over e. And then we're going to get potentially e to the negative 2, and this gets bigger. This becomes 1 over e squared. Just a little recap of exponentials. There is another rule that we use for exponentials. Those are the logarithms. And I just want to remind you what ln of a particular number is. So if I have ln of x, what this means is, and say ln of x is y, what this means is e to the y equals x. So the natural logarithm base is e. It's the, it's the most pure version of a logarithm. So this is going to come up later. I just want to remind you of uh, some stuff you may have learned in algebra, some rules of logarithms. So, for example, if I were to say e to the minus 
T over RC equals some V as some at some time of T divided by V naught. I'm just rearranging our function. I could flip this around and I could say ln of V at some time T divided by V naught is equal to minus T over RC. So I have another way I can express this equation. Um, before we go any further with this whole logarithm uh, stuff, let's look at the dimensions of R and C and what's happening here. So I'll rewrite our equation. V as a function of time is the same as some initial V, V naught, times e to the minus t over rc. And what we're saying is, this is a, a decay curve of sorts. Um, I have a t in this exponent. I also have this rc. Now we have this rule with dimensions. So whatever units v gets, it's going to be volts. My final answer is going to be in volts. t, however, that's typically given in seconds. If we're working only in the SI units, it'll definitely be in seconds. Um, that leaves the question then of what are the dimensions of this whole exponent? Our rule for exponents is they can't have any dimensions. They have to cancel out. So that implies that the units of t, which we know are seconds, has to be the same as the units of r times c. That also must be seconds. So R being the value of resistance and C being the value of capacitance for the resistor and capacitor in this discharge circuit. So let's see if that actually holds up. This is where true dimensional analysis comes into play. Using Ohm's law, V equals IR, we can look at the units of resistance in terms of voltage and current. So this is volts. This is the same as an amp times an ohm. Those are all the SI units for those quantities. Voltage is in volts. Current is in amps. Resistance is in ohms. Similarly, from the equation, Q equals CV. Remember, Q is charge in coulombs. Capacitance is F in farads. And again, V is voltage in volts. V is that nice one where V works for everything. Remember the little quirk of capacitance and charge. In capacitance, the symbol in the equations, the variable, we get C. But the unit is a farad, which gets a capital F quantity of charge in an equation it gets the symbol q whereas the symbol gets or the unit symbol is capital c for a unit of coulombs so again all these symbols i know it's confusing um, part of this is repetition maybe watch this video a few times read the sections in the book because the, these will sink in if you see them enough now let's look at what happens when i multiply resistance times capacitance. So what I can do is I can rearrange those two equations. I can say V over I, voltage over current, is the same as resistance. I can also say that charge over voltage is the same as capacitance. So saying resistance times capacitance is the same as saying voltage over current times charge over voltage. You may be thinking, well, what numbers are associated with these? There are no numbers associated with any of these things yet. All we're stating is relationships between quantities. We know this relationship holds up, that the definition of ohms comes from a ratio of voltage to current. We're not looking at this in a a specific case. We're looking at it in the more general abstract sense. Similarly, our definition of capacitance comes from a ratio of charge to voltage for a capacitor. Yes, but again, 
if this relationship holds up for a capacitor, it must be more absolute than that. So if I can rearrange each of those relationships, again, not thinking about any numbers associated, I can see that something's going to cancel out here. So the quantity of resistance multiplied by the quantity of capacitance, you get a relationship where voltage can cancel out. And so the quantity of resistance has the same relationship, represents the same relationship as the quantity of charge divided by current. But if we remember, we have another definition. Electric current is the same as it's defined to be. Sorry, that tells us coming in too soon. It's defined to be, I'll use a triple equal sign for defined, a change in charge over a change in time. How much charge is passing past a given point at a given time? So if current is charge over time, then the relationship represented by charge divided by current must represent the quantity of time. Again, this is all very abstract. We're looking at relationships between quantities, kind of just playing around with them and seeing what relationships, in some cases, may lead to relationships um, in other combinations of these quantities. And so if this represents time, that means the relationship of resistance times capacitance must represent some kind of time. We can also see this with the unit. So we can do a unit analysis in addition to the dimensional analysis. So if I take resistance, which is ohms, multiplied by capacitance and farads, well, I know an ohm is defined to be a volt divided by amp. Again, that's looking over here at Ohm's law. And a farad is a coulomb. Again, that's not a capacitance value. That's the unit coulomb for charge right here. And it's a coulomb per volt. And the same thing, volts cancel, and I get coulombs per amp. And I know from my definition of electric current, an amp is the same as a coulomb per second. So what then I can replace amps with is coulomb per second. And if that seconds is on the bottom, it's going to go to the top, the denominator of the denominator, and the coulombs cancel, and I am left with seconds. So the product of resistance times capacitance gives us seconds. And this is going to go back into that equation that we see for the voltage uh, decay curve for a capacitor discharge circuit. So that will be continued in the next video.